Hello and welcome back to Scalberlin Cafe and uh, yeah it's been a couple of weeks so Julie and uh, number two child, uh, eldest daughter, they've uh, not long landed in, uh, in Heathrow and driven home so uh, it's been a lovely two weeks out here. Weather's been pretty rubbish actually. They've had the worst winter for 25 years out here and even though it's been warm uh, there has been thunderstorms, dust storms etc but uh, yeah plenty of nice days though so they could get around the pool that's been really cool uh, anyway I thought I'd just throw up this um, this sort of quick news grabbing the Earth Cafe Green Book because uh, like I say I've not done one of these for a little while so I thought we'd just have a little catch up uh, chat about a few things that have been going on in, in the modelling news because there's been a few and I'll update you on the channel and that kind of thing so without further ado I'll just have a sip of my coffee actually just made this one uh, it's quite late here um, but that's decaf so um, hopefully I'll be able to sleep all right tonight okay uh, right channel update then so I've edited part three I think it is of the 109 build that's the Edward 109 G14 AS build that's been edited and uh, I just need to do the voiceover, which I'm going to do after this. So I'll throw that up as soon as that's ready. So look out for that. And then I've, I'm about halfway through editing the painting and weathering the final version. Uh, it's quite an interesting one, that one, because there's uh, lots of different elements to that. Not only is it Luftwaffe camouflage, so uh, I detail all the mottling there. There's also how to go about painting on some of the markings. And it's quite, a, uh, it's quite a good one if you are uh, thinking of trying it and if not yet because the markings on that particular model are really quite straightforward. Apart from the swastika, which I'm not going to put up there because I just don't want any YouTube faff, frankly. So um, yeah, I haven't, um, I'm not going to uh, feature that, but... Doing simple crosses, simple numbers and, and all that kind of stuff uh, I'm, uh, I'm doing. So look out for that if you're interested in spraying or markings. I try to do that as much as possible. I just think it just gives by far and away the best result. So watch out for that one. Um, and then it'll be, uh, I'll get uploaded when I've painted it and filmed it. The F4, which is just here. Now, unfortunately, as you may have seen in my last news article, uh, article uh, video, unfortunately the masks didn't arrive from night in time. So I'm having a bit of a, a think of what I'm going to do. I'm going to paint and decal everything apart from the tail. I'm just going to leave the tail blank, or I might even just paint it. Uh, I haven't really made up my mind yet, but um, eventually when I can get hold of the masks, then I'll be able to finish off and it'll just be the tail. Everything else will be done. I may even, actually, in uh, just thinking aloud, what I might do is just paint uh, and decal the tail as well, other than the code numbers. That's all that's missing. That's all I need the masks for, really everything else I can do with the decals so what I'll do is uh, exactly that I'll, um, I'll I'll do everything apart from the numbers on the tail and then uh, and then I can just finish her off and then that'll be done and then it's a question of what's next and uh, I'm not entirely sure I'm uh, I really can't decide I might do the 109G6 from Tamir in 72nd scale and get that done because the 109Fs by the time I come back I'm going home in three weeks for two weeks leave so by the time I fly back hopefully I'll have them because they are uh, released uh, imminently and what I don't want to do is I don't want to sort of 109 myself out I'm a little bit reluctant to do that because obviously I've just done the 109 G4, G14 AS and then there'll be a 109 G6 and then there'll be a, uh, one maybe possibly two 109 Fs and it's a bit of a kind of 109 train and I don't want to bore you all to pieces. 
what I might do is I might do one of the clear prop kits that I brought back with me, uh, the Key 51 Sonya, and um, I'm, I'm really looking forward to getting that started. I would have done the H75 then, but I'm still waiting for the mask from Nige. Um, so we'll just have to see what, uh, what transpires. Anyway, whatever comes, it'll be interesting and it'll be a last minute decision. What I've also done is, now I work away during the week. Uh, I'm either on a, uh, away for three days or four days, and then I'll have the corresponding either four days or three days off, which is really quite nice. But when I'm away, up at Majma, there's not a great deal to do in the evening. And frankly, I haven't got that much time in the evening anyway, because we're doing sort of 12 hour days and I need to get my beauty sleep. So I've just got a couple of hours off in the evening. What I've decided to do is take up some riveting projects. I've got the Armour P39, the Armour F4F Wildcat, and also Airfix's B25. In fact, I'll just grab the fuselage halves. Now, what I've done with the armour kits is I have snipped the main parts off the sprues, and then I've done a oil wash to highlight all the panel lines, and then I've got my riveting kit, so when I go up there, I can do a proper rivet job. I always tend to do that. If you've seen any of my videos where I've done riveting an airframe, you'll know that I always highlight the panel lines with black oil paint, because it just makes it so much easier to see. What I've done here with the Airfix stuff is, I've also snipped all the bits off the sprues, but I've sanded down the uh, the panel lines. Now actually, the panel lines on this are really quite nice, if I'm honest, but uh, I just wanted that added layer of refinement. So I have sanded them down, but not too much. What I've also done is the fuselage windows on this kit are designed to be put in after painting, essentially. Now you will have a seam line around there. And what I didn't want is the sort of mounting bit that's, um, if you can imagine, if this is the uh, outside of the fuselage, and then you've got that little sort of bit that sort of sticks out. Oh, if I can align that, uh, let's do it that way. Right, so it's like that, and then you've got this little bit that sticks out, and then the glass bit sort of sits in this bit here. There's a, there's a risk, I think, that you'll be able to see that little ledge all the way around. So what I've done is I've removed that, and I've thinned the inside of the fuselage right down. I've super glued with black super glue all the way around the clear part so it's protruding ever so slightly. And then what I've done is I've sanded it flush and then polished it back. And actually that's done a really cool job of feathering in those windows. It doesn't quite work on the ones behind the cockpit because they're slightly bulged, which I only found out when I started doing it which was a pain in the in the buttocks as Forrest Gump would say. Now it's quite well known uh, that the FXB25 has these clear inserts on the side here because there's another couple of windows. Now why they didn't do that, why they didn't do those separate because they've done these separate I don't really know but I guess it helps to um, you get a better effect. The effect I'm trying to achieve by doing all that work back here. What I'm gonna do is um, I've actually glued these in and I've put some filler, some Mr. Hobby epoxy, because it doesn't shrink and it sounds and scribes just like plastic. Fill all the way around and then I'm gonna rescribe it and I think that'll be a better finish than, even though, even though the fit is really good and it's along the panel line, you can, you can always tell it's an insert and I don't want that. So my plan is, tomorrow, is I will sand all that um, down, polish it back, and then I'll rescribe those panels in there, and then hopefully you won't be able to tell it's, a, uh, it's an insert. And then, um, what I'm gonna do is I'll do the oil wash on these bits, and then I'll go, uh, and that'll be ready for routing as well. And I'm actually, I've, all, I've always wanted to do this kit, uh, and I've never really got round to it, but I think a full rivet job on, a, on this B25, I think that's going to look ace. Um, and I'm really excited. So what I'm doing is I'm slowly filling up 
my Hannon's basket with um, with bits and bobs for this, uh, some photo etch and all that kind of stuff. Uh, Nigel's um, done me some masks for all the clear parts, which is awesome. Um, but I'm uh, I'm probably going to get the big headset because it's uh, you get a free set of masks with that as well. Um, and then if I um, sort of go wrong anywhere, or I can mask off some of the inside bits. But my plan with this is, uh, is I'm going to detail up the cockpit. Uh, I'll probably get the CMK set for the, uh, the nose as well. And then when I glue the clear parts on the nose, then I'm going to sand it all flush, get rid of all the raised um, uh, framing. And then I'm going to mask it and spray it and paint it. And I think you'll get a more in scale look. That's the plan for this one. It's actually not that big. Um, I thought it'd be bigger than that, but um, yeah. So, uh, and then at some stage in the schedule, I'll, uh, I'll crack on with that. Um, that'll be the plan. I've also got a 48 scale Tamiya F14 that I need to get done for my mate, the same mate I'm doing the Phantom for. And uh, looks like I'm going home in November, so I need to get that done before November. So, very busy schedule. But I'm determined to get it all in. There we go. So that's kind of the modelling on the channel. Uh, some of the modelling news then. Uh, there's obviously, I've been away for two weeks and there's been actually quite a lot of news. What I'm going to do is I'll just sort of cherry pick the sort of few bits that really caught my eye. The first one is obviously the Edward 109F, which I'm really excited about, 70 second scale. Uh, they've released some shots of the, uh, not only just the sprues, but also the moulds and everything, and that's really cool. And as I uh, speak to you now, the newsletter was released yesterday with even more gouging, and it's got a really comprehensive article about the development of the F and all the different variants. Looks like, uh, well I know for a fact that it's a dual combo boxing that's coming out first and you're going to get the F2 and the F4 and you can do every single sub variant of the F that's in there. So it's really comprehensive, looks like they've really done their research and it should be an amazing package. The design philosophy is on the same lines as the S199, which is on the channel, which were beautiful kits. The innovative thing is, at the front of the floor, the cockpit floor, are these kind of recesses, which are actually the undercarriage recesses. And it's such a positive location, and it just sets the angle perfectly. And that really bodes well. And they also mentioned in the newsletter that the K4, which is due out um, probably December, that's going to be the first 48 scale 109 variant that's going to have that. And the S199 is coming out next year in 48th, and that's going to have the same. They were, uh, they also said in the newsletter that it's the 72nd kit is not just a shrunken down of the 48th kit. Their sort of design, their experience in design, their the technology, the tooling that they've invested in means that they could really go to town on the 72nd kit. So, um, yeah, that's really cool. What I'm going to do, I think, is I, I'm just going to build one of the kits and then I'll wait to get all the aftermarket bits and then I'll do it, uh, another one later on down the line. And... Uh, yeah, with all the bells and whistles, and then we can have a little comparison. That, that'll that be the plan, I think. Right, so that's 109. Right, the armour hurricane is due out imminently as well. I wasn't going to get that, because I, I don't know why. I love armour. I love the hurricane. I I just thought, mm, do you know what? I've got so much on, I'll, I'll just delay getting it. But, yeah. Breaking, uh, breaking strength of a wet Kit Kat, so I've gone out and uh, I've pre-ordered that uh, with uh, Antics, so my mate Andy, also the 109s. So that will be coming to the channel as well, I'll do a sprue tour of that, very excited because it's got a full rivet job. Now, talking of Hurricanes and full rivet job, the Hobby Boss kit, 
also has a full rivet job and that looks really nice. Uh, it'd be interesting how accurate that is. I know the, the decals are absolutely awful in it. The colours, the, the red's bright, too, way too bright. It's almost like a brick red it should be. The yellow's like a lemon yellow. The codes are white instead of medium sea grey, so, it's utter, so they're useless, it's ghastly. Um, so the decals in that are just crap. But the uh, the actual kit itself looks really quite nice, really well detailed, and the, the rivets look brilliant. So uh, I'm wondering if I should get that as well, and then I've got the Airfix one in the stash. Blimey, who knows? Right, we shall see. What, uh, what's in my Hannan's basket for that one uh, are some master barrels with the springs. No matter how clever their moulding in plastic is, they're not going to be as good as brass barrels. So I've ordered those. Right, so that's those. Other stuff that's in the news then. The uh, men have announced some sprue shots of their Apache. Obviously Tacom's come out and they beat them, to the, uh, beat them in the race. However... Nige from Nigel's modelling bench, he's building at the moment and he's come across a stumbling block in that, well, not only are the instructions a bit crap in that some of the numbering and parts placement is really vague uh, and a bit contradictory. So, um, yeah, he's had quite a frustrating um, time of it. And he's at the deckling stage and the decals look absolutely awful in that kit. No doubt they're... they're will be some aftermarket ones out there at some point. But I think Meng kit will be, uh, it might not be quite this detailed, maybe it is, I don't know, we're yet to see, but I'm sure it's gonna be easier to build and no doubt the decals are gonna be much better. So that's very close, I think. No idea on price, but who knows, we shall see. Something that really caught my eye that was really exciting was a company Brand new company, one man band, proper cottage industry. You remember that term, cottage industry? That used to be resin, didn't it, and stuff. Cottage industry. Uh, so, uh, Laminar Flow Designs, he has done a 3D printed conversion, 132nd scale Spitfire Mark 14E. It looks utterly stunning. 69 euros, 65 parts, obviously the new nose for the Griffin engine and tail, two types of rudder, the radiators, oh, all sorts of bits and pieces in there. Looks absolutely awesome. I'm just wondering if you could get a Mark 8 from Tamiya and do a uh, an early Mark 14. I'm not a Spitfire expert. Personally, I'd rather the uh, the Razorback Mark 14. But uh, there we go. I'm wondering even if you could, uh, uh, if that is possible, if you could do a PR19. Um, obviously, you've got to find a canopy from somewhere. But anyway, I quite like that low back uh, Mark 14. So that's really cool, and I really want to. That's a, that is a classic case of seeing an aftermarket thing, and then really being inspired and wanting to go out and buy the kit and and actually do that project. I'm really excited by that. I really want to do that. That looks ace. Right, res kit news. Um, they seem to be on a massive roll late. Uh, just the last six months, they are like throwing new stuff at us. Some of the things that have come out in the last couple of weeks in 132nd scale and 148th scale, a 3D printed, printed even, undercarriage set for the Tamiya F14. That looks really cool. Now I'm not gonna get that because I've got, um, is it Mark One Design? I don't know actually, who, who did it? But uh, I've already got a 3D printed set for, um, for the one I'm doing next. But uh, that looks utterly amazing. They've also, uh, announced Storm Shadow, which I think is really cool. Um, and again, that's kind of quite inspiring to go out and buy an SU24 kit and uh, and do that. So that's cool. Uh, 
A company I've never heard of, again, I suspect is uh, Cottage Industry, one man band, is Scale Navy Stuff. They are doing a 132nd scale A5 Vigilante. Now that thing's going to be bloody huge. It's going to be 3D printed resin. So it's, I, I wouldn't have thought it's going to be that heavy compared to a traditional resin kit. But um, yeah, it's probably going to be quite bespoke, probably really rather expensive. But um, my goodness me, how cool would that be? Now Winkle, the world's greatest test pilot, he said that he test flew the Vigilante and thought it was absolutely uh, rubbish. Just that long fuselage sticking out, it was it was quite unstable in yaw, uh, and he very much suspected that the TSR2 would be um, even worse. Um, dreadful aeroplane TSR2, but um, sort of kind of similar type of concept, I think. But that would look really impressive on a competition table, wouldn't it, or or a club table at a modelling show. So that was that. Great Wall Hobby, their F-14B, that's out very soon. They've released some sprue shots as well and some uh, test shots being made up and a really intriguing parts breakdown. Now, the F-15, uh, was it F-15? What was it they were doing? No, it was F-14, wasn't it? Was it F no, F-15, I'm sure it was F-15. In 72nd scale with just ridiculous inserts all over it. Uh, no, sorry, that's fine molds. I'm thinking fine molds. Fine molds is F-15. Looks utterly ridiculous. And the F-4 is a massive chore to build, by all accounts. Um, Drew Manton is a very good friend of mine, quite active on social media and uh, hopefully getting back to YouTube. He has, uh, has shelved many a fine molds F-4. I'm hoping that the F-14B 48th from Great War Hobby is going to go together really quite nicely. They do. The only sticking point really is the price. It, it, it sounds like it's going to be about 150 quid. Really very expensive. 50% more than the Tamiya kit. But um, there we go. Uh, if you want quality, you've got to be prepared to pay for it. Quite friendly. Excuse me on the shift. My stubborn buttocks going to sleep. Uh, right, two more to go then. Right, Ammo MiG-17. I've uh, talked about that a couple of times before on the channel. They are taking pre-orders. There's also the resin uh, uh, wheels, seats, boarding ladder, rocket pods, pylons. So there's some uh, quite a few resin goodies going with it. Um, that will be coming to the channel. See, I'm a friend of ammo. So that's coming. Really looking forward to seeing that one as well. I quite fancy a Middle Eastern one. Funny old thing, I'm in the Middle East. Um, uh, I don't know when it's going to be ready, but if they're taking pre-orders, it can't be that long, can it? And the last one is Magic Factory's Corsair. So they're doing it, uh, I've written it down here, F4U1A, 1 and a 2. I think you're going to get two kits in a box. There's options for folded wings and spread wings and wheels up. And it looks really quite detailed. I'm hoping, against hope, it's going to be fully riveted. Um, but it doesn't look like it from what we've seen on the CAD, but then, you know, the Armour Hobbies um, Hurricane had no rivets on the CAD, and that's having rivets. So here's hoping. But uh, yeah, that looks like a really good kit as well. Lots of, lots of good stuff coming out. Exciting times. Right, book is closed. That's that. Uh, right, what is there to say? Yes, so just in summary then, watch out on the channel for the next part of the 109, part three, I think, is it part three? Yes, part three, the construction. Uh, fairly straightforward, because it's an Edward 109, but um, yeah, might be uh, might be interesting to some of you, I guess. Uh, and then watch out, um, again coming soon, is the final part of that, the painting. And uh, yeah, also watch out for the painting of the F4 Phantom. And uh, I'll be cracking on with that. Uh, I'm going to start painting that tomorrow. Maybe I can get it done tomorrow. I've got all day off. We shall have to see. 
There we are. Right, thank you very much. Um, there we are. I'm going to carry on sobbing quietly because the mighty Liverpool um, sadly missed out on Champions League right at the end. But um, hopefully the momentum that they had at the end of the season can carry on into, uh, into next season and we'll have a much better season, inshallah. Uh, and then I hope Everton have a better season as well because we need to carry on beating them in the derby. Uh, also, football news actually is Messi's coming to Saudi Arabia, going to play for Al Halal, which is the top team in Riyadh, and I'm wondering if I can get to a game. Now, now I very much doubt it if uh, if he is coming because um, they're already selling shirts, and you know Riyadh is very excited. Obviously, we've already got Ronaldo out here, so to rekindle that Ronaldo Messi rivalry. Is, uh, is really very cool. So hopefully I can get along to a game, um, which will be ace. Right, there we are, I'm waffling now. Um, so uh, yeah, lots, uh, to, uh, lots coming to the channel. Uh, so keep an eye out on all those and I'll see you on the next one. Cheers, bye-bye.